<clears throat> oh, Trishula, dude, that that sniped me real, really well with the with the raid right at the start starting point. Appreciate that. Hope you had a good stream. Uh, welcome everybody. Do you want some cake? You 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 know, I actually do know what you're talking about because I was I was hanging out in the stream just a little bit, but. Uh, yeah, I, I, well, I, I, I was, I was wondering what you were doing because it said Master Duel in the thing, and then uh, it was just you in the kitchen <laughs> cooking something, like literally. Uh, AFJ4, thank you for the prime. Appreciate that. Uh, welcome everybody to the Thursday stream. Hope you are all doing well so far. We have some fun stuff to do today. Cooking is a strong word. Yeah, it, to be fair, I, I didn't really think about what word I used. It didn't quite look like cooking, but yeah, something it, it resembled it. It resembled it. <laughs> Dude. Guys, okay, I have a question before we even, before we even really begin. Uh, who was here? <laughs> who was here yesterday when, uh, when, we, uh, when we ended stream? <laughs> oh, there you are. I was about to say. <laughs> Dude, yesterday was probably the funniest raid I've ever made. Um well, actually probably it's not it's not it's not the funniest cuz I think the funniest is still that one time uh we raided someone uh and then their PC crashed or their o their OBS crashed. I I don't I didn't even know that was possible, but their 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 stream just effed um but the the even the, the yesterday was pretty funny so i uh so i i was looking for someone to raid right i was looking for someone to raid and i just scrolled down the list and the uh, and uh i i found um i found mr stevo over here and his uh his stream title said unchained to masters and i was like okay that sounds fun let's send the people over to stevo's stream uh to watch some unchained gameplay to masters right so I, I press raid, I end stream, and what I usually do is I hang out in whoever's stream I raid, just, just a little bit, depending on what my plans are. Sometimes I have to leave right away, but sometimes I hang out for a couple minutes, right? And so I, I, I raid, and I'm like, okay, let's see, let's see what they're doing on this stream, right? And uh, right as we join, literally right as we join, first of all, uh... They didn't notice it, right? They didn't notice the raid, which not always, not not everyone has like sound alerts on for raids or whatever. It's fine. So they didn't notice the raid, and they were in the middle, literally as we raided. They were in the process of dismantling their entire unchained deck because they were molding at. They bricked the previous game, which was just one too much, and they were in the process of. They they were so mad they dismantled the entire deck. Everything was gone, including the infinite impermanences. <laughs> they even killed their impermanences. They everything, everything. They dismantled the whole thing and went on to play stun. <laughs> they went on to play stun, man. And they didn't notice they were raided. There was like there was like a thousand people in chat. They were like, oh my god, this is going to be a stun day. One bad day, they're dismantled. And then the, the, the even funnier thing was like two minutes later, they wanted to put impermanence into their stun deck. Um, <laughs> and they didn't have it anymore because they dismantled the impermanence. And so they replaced it with something else in their stun deck. And then they queued into ranked. They queued into ranked with stun. They lost the coin toss and they got FTK'd by the Utopia Dragon R thing. <laughs> it was so funny, man. It was like top three of all, th top three raids of all time, man. Oh god. Yeah. Anyways, Whew. that was I. I. I was just sitting here. I was sitting here uh, and laughing. It was crazy. Anyways, shouts out. Shouts out. I hope you had a good stream afterwards, even though I doubt it. <laughs> I do doubt it. All right. Welcome to the stream, everybody. It's acted. That's what you would think. You would think it's scripted, but it sometimes is not. I'm telling you, the universe is content brain to some extent. All right. Welcome to the stream, everybody. We'll do. We'll quickly do the warm up, and then we will. Um, and then we will talk about what we're doing today. Let's begin. And today we will simply not be washed. 
scripted raid. Yeah, paid paid raid. Uh, bup, bup, bup. It's not a good start. I've never seen this before. Eagle Claw. Yep. Volcanic FTK gaming. I'm not. I'm not gonna lie. I, I the FTK portion. I don't like that much. Oh, that's a fabled. Uh, fabled diff. Fabled diff. If if you win worlds with this card, it's the it's the world champ diff. By the way. Ooh, I've seen this one. Uh, this is like something gate. Is it? No, it's not extra gate. Dimension gate? No. Oh, yeah, that's what it was. Okay. Sometimes it's lagging and I think it's wrong, but that is what it was. Uh, not this thing again. Ah, uh, what is the, tr the, 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 the train? It's a, tr well, yeah, super heavy. Samurai, but Steam Train King, yeah. Um, E N. I hate E N, dude. I wish I didn't know how that cart looked. Uh, Coatless. I don't know what that's called. It might be a B Trooper, but actually it doesn't really remind me of a B Trooper, so... Battle... Oh, it's a Battle Wasp, okay. This I've seen for sure. If, if not in card guess, this is the one where it's Jerry Beans Man. Uh, this is like something, this is like a duel, right? Uh, instinct? What do you mean instinct? Battle instinct? Survival instinct? Defender's instinct is not a thing. Intersect. Right. Oh, I've seen this one. Uh, this is the Valence Fiendsville. Yeah. The thing is, I never know which one is which. So Koenig Vissen is like the blue one, right? Oh, that's, um, that Albion the Shrouded Dragon. Yeah. This feels familiar too. That's Mermail Abyss. I knew it was Abyss and then something with N, but I didn't know which one of the two. So naturally, we missed the 50. Oh, that's beyond. Ah. Uh, could have gotten that one sooner. Silver Scry. Who is this? I don't think I know. I don't think I know this one. Trans the Magic Swordsman. Yeah, I don't know that one. Do you think at this point... We've had every single card at least once. Should I, in theory, have seen every single one of these cards in Card Guesser before? Uh, Noble Arms of Destiny, right? No? 
I mean, it's it'd be I, I don't know how often have we played this? We've been playing this like almost every day. This is some crawler stuff, but I don't know the name. Survivor. Oh, that's um. Is that Mist Valley or War Rock? It might be Falcon. Yeah. New card. Well, yeah, new cards are added over time, of course. But like of the old stuff, let's say, have we seen everything? I don't know. Trickstar, right? Ivaridis. I've seen this. Is that Girgi Anchor? Yeah. Salaman Great Mole. Um. Oh, I feel like I've seen this one, but I can't. I can't name it. Necro Defend. I have seen this one randomly somewhere, but I don't know. Oh, this is uh, Hippo. Just Hip Hippo, right? Yeah. Dude, the key and what I really need to get better at is getting these cards very early. Okay, this is the Ice Barrier thing. I know this one because of the trailer, but I don't know what the name is. This one was in that cinematic trailer where the, this, like, Trisha, like came out of it. But I have no idea what it's called. Pillars? See, that, that would have been my guess. But it doesn't... That's not a... No. Hazy Pillar? No. Freezing Chains. Kim, thank you for the first time, Prime. Appreciate that. Thank you for the support. Okay, that's Dark Master's Orc. Easily. Uh, looking like hella Girgia stuff, but which one is that? Is that Girgia Gears? No. Transmission gear. Okay. Uh, Swift Birdman Joe. Easy. Mm. Oh, Beatrice. Ah. Garuda. Uh, Asketism. Asceticism. I don't know. What, I don't know how you say that. Asceticism. Uh, this is Karakuri Scrolls. No, but like, ah, uh, what is this called? It's not called Scrolls. I think Karakuri Anatomy. Right. Yeah. This is Dunamis. Uh, please be Bufo, please. No. Yeah, I don't know. Terra Pentis, okay. Old card. I find it funny how you can tell it's an old card. Oh, that's the vanilla. Oh, God, the, the skull? With the light thingy in his, in their head, is it just Dark King of the Oh Dark King of the Abyss? Yeah, right. The Metal Fusion, the Metal Dra is. I think it's just called Metal Dragon. Please be Metal Dragon. Please be Metal Dragon. Yeah. 
Uh, Girgi Accelerator. Please? Yeah. If you say please, you're more often correct. Is what I've noticed. That's Taketenborg. I would recognize that thing a mile away. I have no idea how Terror Top looks, but I know Taketenborg, dude. Troll Despair. <laughs> Jordanian, thank you for the 15 month. I, this is a Link monster. I've seen this. D2 shield? Is that a Link monster? Maybe I... Maybe It's a Link monster on it? I don't know. It's a trap card? Okay, but is that a Link monster on it? No? Okay. I don't know what I... I don't know why I thought that. Uh, no idea what that is. Limiter overload. Oh, Vylon. Do I try? No. Prism. Karma cut. Uh, dude, not Tempest. Uh, dude, I'm, 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 I'm fumbling. Uh, Dragon Ruler Lightning. Yeah. This is... I don't know what this is. Array. Hmm. Oh, not another Preda plant. Come on. Easy Laquari. This feels familiar. What is this? Oh, blast health by a tribute, right? Yeah. Yeah, I, will, I, I know that one. I, I wasn't quite sure in the beginning. I could have gotten that for more points, maybe. But uh, Are you Satellite Warrior? I don't think you are. Max Warrior. I knew it was something Warrior. It was Max Warrior. Um, another noble knight, man. I'm so bad with the noble knight names, brothers. Okay. We had the same problem like a couple days ago. That's a reptilian. Naga, I think. Yep. Tribe infecting virus. Uh, I've seen this too. Odin Eye? Yeah. This one, I am pretty sure I have no idea. So I'm skipping it fast. So maybe we have a chance at another card. Monster Assortment. Okay. Um... That's a spell trap from Burning Abyss, obviously. But which one is that? Terminus? Dude, we're so close to 900. Ah! 
it's pretty good though if i may say so myself you guys have no right today you guys have no right today to call me wash for that one that was pretty good that was pretty good not washed <laughs> not washed and not rigged at all <laughs> Grandmaster, well, thank you for the three months. Welcome back. Appreciate you so much. Thank you. Okay. Below 900, so not rigged. Above 800, so not washed. As we said yesterday. Yeah, exactly. We talked about this yesterday. That was the perfect result. I'm actually glad we didn't get 900. Dude, I, I missed the times where we would get 1,000 points. They didn't change anything about the point distribution, did they? Was it always... I mean, now I'm coping really hard. We probably just don't do as well. <laughs> All right, good, good. Glad that we talked about that. Thank you for the full year. Welcome back. Um... We are looking for a not dark level three or lower warrior, not warrior, not exceed effect monster, 1500 defense, less than 1500 attack, newer than 2015. Newer than 2015. Uh, what's the defense on, I don't know, Cyber's Integrator? A thousand, that's not it. Uh, level 3s with 1500 defense. Which deck has a lot of level 3s? I think Junk Forward is 1500 defense, but that's a warrior and it's too old. A Baby Charmer? The Baby Charmers are from like 2006. So. Unchained. But don't the Unchained have um, 1500 attack as well? It's less than 1500 attack, so it's not that. Keras? Ooh. It is a... Earth monster, level 2, not just an effect. So what does this mean? Uh, it could be a Synchro, but I don't know. Is there a level 2 Synchro, like the Melfi? But that would be a beast. It's not a beast. So... It can't be a Link monster, obviously, because it has defense points. Um, it can't be an Exceed, because we tried Rongo. Uh, it can be a flip. It can be a ritual. Is there like a megalith level 2 ritual? There is, but that's 2,000 defense. Yeah, no megalith fits. Um, it's also newer than 2020. It could be... A, I think a pendulum is relatively likely. Because it's between 2016 and 2019. But I don't know what's a level 2 Earth Pendulum with 1500 defense. A Crawler? Oh, it could be a Flip Monster. Oh, it might be Crawler Glyle. Yeah, it's Crawler Glyle. Okay, I'm going to be honest with you. If that, didn't, if that wasn't posted in chat, I wouldn't have gotten that one. I don't know the, gla the, the Crawlers. But um, yeah, that's why we do these together. All right. All right. That's the warm up out of the way. Done. Easy. Pretty well. Went pretty well today. Uh, the Incredible Falk. Thank you for the gifts up, by the way. Thank you so much. Appreciate you. Um, today, we have two main things to do. Uh, the first one is there's an event in Master Duel which I find very interesting, which is the, uh, the try-out duel thingy where you open Nibiru every time. <laughs> which I find a very interesting thought experiment of what would happen if, uh, if those cards are always there, right? Um, basically forcing people to respect them in deck building, which I find is a very interesting thing to do it, so I want to try that out. Um, we also have the... Um, we also have the... Um, the podcast later today with Mr. Farfa. Farfa has been sick this week. Uh, I hope he's been doing better. He said we can do it today. Uh, hopefully we can. We'll see about that later. But it is at least planned. Um, because uh, And I'm looking forward to it because I think today is going to be a very interesting discussion because we are discussing 
uh, the extra deck. So all kinds of things like the concept of the extra deck and like extra deck boss monsters and that kind of stuff. Um, you know, is it good for the game that everyone has like Baron and Appaloosa and all that kind of stuff? We're, we'll talk about that. I think that's going to be interesting. Um, so that is on the agenda later. I said yesterday um, that I might do a deck building stream today. However, I, I noticed that if we do the podcast today, I don't think we have enough time to do that. Um, and the other thing I noticed is I didn't really know what to build. I didn't really know what to build in, uh, in for the TCG at the moment. Uh, I don't know. I've kind of tried most of the things that I really wanted to try. So what I thought would be fun if I maybe... Maybe I can let you guys decide what we build for next week or something like that. You know, I need some more preparation time for deck building. But uh, I, think we can, I think we can set something up for next week. But yeah. Nib is the problem, not Baron or Apo. Nib is the problem, not Baron or Apo. What do you mean by that? Do you, you think Nibiru is the reason why Yu-Gi-Oh is the way it is nowadays? Like, I, I like, well, problem is a, is a harsh word, first of all. Like, the thing is, um, if anything, that, like, I don't know, what, what would, if I had to phrase, if I had to put it into, like, one word, if I have to, like, not one word, but if I had to, like, describe what's what the problem with modern Yu-Gi-Oh is if there even is a problem like I'm gonna be honest with you every every time every time I complain or every time I I give criticism to the game I I still like I I want to emphasize like I still love this this game and I still think it's a really good game no matter what uh it's got it's got worse for formats sometimes you know sometimes a format is very good sometimes a format is not so good that's very natural I think in any card game you play um, but I, if I, if I had to like describe what, what's the most concerning, let's say most concerning, cause not like, it's not like straight up bad, but like the most concerning thing about modern Yu-Gi-Oh is how like, I think too much happens in one turn. Um, which is not necessarily bad. I think long turns are not necessarily a problem. The only thing that is a problem is when the player going first does so many things on their first turn because the first turn is per definition the least interactive turn in Yu-Gi-Oh, right? Because Yu-Gi-Oh is a in in theory a super interactive game, right? Because of like how um there's like games that are more designed to be more played alongside each other, right? Like for example the Pokemon trading card game where like you both kind of do your thing. Um and even magic to an extent is like this because I think it's a little harder to interact with for example, you can't just go and attack your opponent's creatures in magic, right? You have to like attack the you, the opponent directly and they decide whether they block or not. So if you have like a really annoying creature on the field in magic, you have to like spend a spell card to deal with it. You can't just attack it, right? In Yu-Gi-Oh, you can basically interact with um your opponent's stuff super heavily, right? The problem is in uh in the first turn of the game, and it's specifically the first turn of the game, you can't interact with your opponent because you haven't had the chance to put stuff onto the board yet right you hadn't you hadn't had the chance to set trap cards yet quick play spells you can't activate spells you couldn't have put any monsters onto the field yet and interact with your opponent so like the more weight i think is on the first turn in Yu-Gi-Oh, the le the less interactive it becomes <laughs> maybe um Appreciate you for the four months. Thank you. Um, the yeah, the thing is, and I think that's the that's the thing, right? Because I I think the majority of people would agree that um, the majority of people would agree that the the more interactive a card game is, the more fun it is. Generally, like a lot of people, I think would agree to that, especially when it comes to Yu-Gi-Oh, right? Like whenever you have a very interactive game, those tend to be more fun. Right, which in uh, in return makes it so that doing as much as possible on your first turn is is not great, um, you know. And so I think blaming hand traps is is kind of like a weak argument because hand traps are. I'll admit, I'll admit it. Hand traps are like a a band aid fix to these kind of problems but hand traps are at least a um at least a, an attempt 
at making or at creating more interaction on the very first turn of the game because that is the most crucial turn where it's like disproportionate right like the the, the there's the it's the least interactive turn by, by default but it's also getting more and more important on what happens there right more stuff happens in a turn that is the least interactive which is kind of like a that is a direction that you don't want to go in, right? You don't want to put more weight on the first turn and have less interaction on it, right? And so um, there's two ways you can quote-unquote tackle this problem if you want to in, in future card design, right? For, for Konami, I guess. Uh, the one way would be you, you, you remove some weight from the first turn, right? You'd, you'd have to create more archetypes and meta relevant cards that are like more focused on playing more turns rather than just making one big board on the first turn or you need to create more interaction for the first turn but that just results in like typically more hand traps and stuff like that which i don't know is if that's something that they want to do right <laughs> what was that for? Why, do, <laughs> why did I deserve that? <laughs> Appreciate the five months, Toxic Rain. <laughs> okay, 21 Yakko, thank you for the nine months. Uh, is, it, is, it, is it a little weird, champ, to call a nine-month uh, sub a pregnancy? I feel like that's... Um, it feels a little bit weird. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how I feel about that. <laughs> no it's normal okay well <laughs> well yeah anyways that's um that's an that's an interesting thing because i think that is uh yeah i don't know it, that, that it's it's what i'm noticing whenever i'm whenever i'm basically there's there's two modes that i'm in when i play this game the one mode is I, I, I try hard, right? I try hard and I just, when I'm, when I'm in that mode, I basically don't complain about the game at all. I just take it as it is. I just play it and I try to do well in how the game is, right? I, like, I don't care about what the game could be. I just look at it. Okay, this is how the game is being played at the moment. And I try to, I try to do well, right? And in that one, um, I usually just you know, accept things as they are and, and play accordingly, right? The second mode is uh, when, I, when I just play to have fun, right? When I just play stuff that I like, because not always, it, they, they don't always go hand in hand. Of course, I have fun tryharding as well. There's fun aspects there too, but there are some aspects that I'm missing. Like, for example, sometimes the best decks in the game are not the, ga the decks that I enjoy the most, right? Like, for example um super interactive decks like the the paleo deck that i played uh two weeks ago that is nowhere close what i would play if i was tryharding that event right so whenever i'm not tryharding and just playing the stuff that i really like then i'm starting to notice that there are things about modern Yu-Gi-Oh that i wish were a little bit different right like i don't i'm not i don't mind the way the game is i think it's fine and i i still enjoy it very much but if i could choose if i had the choice would I change it just a little bit? Yeah, maybe. Maybe I would. I would. I would make it a little bit slower and a little bit less focused on the first turn. I don't want it to go back to how it was. I think that's a relatively weak argument. Like because if I just want to play the game like it was in 2017, I could just go and play like uh, Time Wizard format. That's completely fine. And I think development is very important. <laughs> I appreciate the 420, but I'm not gonna play. Uh, well, at least for now, it's not planned to play Photon in um, in Master because I don't even have all the cards. Um, but yeah, maybe someday, maybe someday, not today. Who plays 2017 format? I literally have, I have my uh, my 2017 60 card Paleo Frog sleeved up and ready to go. I haven't played with it yet because no one has challenged me to a 2017 format duel. But in theory, I'm ready. <laughs> I have it. 
I have it. When he, what so you're saying so your suggestion is basically instead of having 15 card extra deck and 15 card side deck set you can you basically have a pool of 30 that you can adjust up and down i mean i think from a from a competitive i mean from a from the personal perspective this would this would just straight up be better right because then it would it'd be completely broken It'd be completely broken because some decks don't need the extra deck, so they can just side 30 cards. Like you look at like, I don't know, Luanderies or Monarchs or whatever, like decks that don't really need the extra deck or Labyrinth, right? They can just go and play a 30 card side deck or like a 20 card side deck or 25 card side deck, right? And they can just they can just make their deck super broken after siding for every matchup. Um, which would feel kind of toxic, you know? It it would feel kind of bad in practice. Like it sounds good, maybe. But in practice, you would be like, oh, well, I'm playing against this Labyrinth deck, right? Maybe I, have a, maybe I have a relatively easy time game one, but then after siding, they can just side in all the hate for my deck, right? And they can just basically floodgate or play the most broken cards for every matchup after siding, right? Which I think is, uh, is weird. Um, and then also th at the same time, like if you play against some decks that really can do some crazy stuff if they have more extra i think you're just encouraging more broken decks with that which i don't think that's the solution right um i i have we have talked about this at some point in the past where i think there is design space there to be explored when uh when you look at it. like they have for example they have made decks or cards that have incentivized you to play no extra deck for example or less extra deck right like we look at like no extra deck monarchs for example right i think there's other things that they could uh, explore that mess with the rules of deck building right like i've seen this in other games and i've always liked it a lot where maybe they could have they have never done something like this right where maybe you can you can and there's so many things that you can imagine even off the top of my head that you could do to spice things up right maybe you can you can print uh, a card that says you can have four copies of this in your deck uh and then that maybe that's interesting or maybe you, you print a card that says if you put this into your deck your deck can have more than 60 cards or uh if you put this card into your extra deck then uh you can have more than 15 cards in your extra deck. we thought of this specifically for salamangrade because salamangrade seems like it's at a, at a handicap for no reason because their gimmick is like having multiple copies of everything in the extra deck right so one thing that was on my mind when I when I thought about that was like, hey, what if you made it so that the duplicates of Salamangrates, they don't count towards your extra deck limit, right? So like the first Sunlight Wolf counts, but then the second and the third one don't, right? And then that way you can play Salamangrate with, um, with more extra deck slots, right? But it wouldn't be a, like you couldn't do it in just like every deck. Like for example, just slap three sunlight wolves into every deck because you can just use prosperity and extravagance with it um i don't know uh because you still have to like sacrifice actual slots because the the first sunlight wolf takes up a slot right yeah i think that'd be interesting like a, a way like messing around with that stuff because uh, if you think about it, actually, I think it's weird that uh, the game's been around for what, like, uh, twenty? I mean, twenty fifth anniversary, and we haven't messed with any of that design space at all, right? Which I'm always for. I'm always for messing around with those sort of design spaces uh, a little bit, right? Because we've 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 had new cards with new effects, but we've never had anything that actually messed with how you build the decks in, in, in that sense, right? You've never had something that maybe allows you to play more side deck or more extra deck or whatever like, like, like that. I think that'd be interesting. But yeah, I'm yapping. Hearthstone had the issue of doing that and it's even worse for new players. I mean, is it? Is it that bad for new players? I feel like it's not that big of a deal, right? I don't think it's that big of a deal. 
like yeah uh, an experienced player like let's say let's say i'm uh let's say i'm let's let's use the example that i just made like let's say salamangrade is the only deck in the game that has the ability to play more than 15 extra deck cards right because they they print a, a statement on the salamangrade link monsters that says um, if this is in your extra deck, uh, you can play or like, let's say, let's make it less broken to begin with. Let's say the third copy of this card does not count towards your extra deck limit. So you can play three Sunlight Wolves, but it only counts as two, right? That way, if you want to play three Bailings and three Sunlight Wolves, it doesn't take up six slots. It takes up four and so on and so forth, right? Let's make it less broken just, just to make it more imaginable, right? Um, so Salamangrate is the only deck that can exceed 15 extra deck cards because of that rule. First thing is, would that even be a problem? Because arguably Salamangrate should have, if anything, in modern Yu-Gi-Oh! Salamangrate should have an upside when you play it rather than a downside. Because the fact that you have to fill your entire extra deck with Salamangrate cards um, is a, an actual downside if you want to play Salamangrate. Like that extra deck is so tight for no reason. Like it's not like, your extra deck is super tight because you need so many different utility options. No, your extra deck is so tight because you have to play the same thing multiple times to even get its full effect, right? Like, uh, you don't get actual utility in a Salamangrid extra deck. You just get, like, the same thing over and over. Like, it's it's actually not... It's, it's just tight for no reason, right? Um, so you could help decks this way, right? If you want to make a cool gimmick, like relinking, sure, do it, but don't handicap the deck because of it right um but at the same time this is not even strictly an advantage right because if you're going second and your opponent looks at your extra deck and they see oh you're playing 20 extra deck cards uh you uh you now know what you're playing against you can make your turn with the full knowledge of what your opponent is playing right so like you can like blind dweller blind dweller them and all that kind of stuff right and i think that's uh i think that's I think that'd be okay. I think it'd be an interesting thought experiment, at least, which makes me wonder why they haven't messed around with, with any of that in the past. But yeah, I mean, we've talked about this exact example in the past before, so. Yeah. Uh, Register, thank you for the four months. And Munchie, thank you for the six. Time to throw rocks at each other in Master Duel. That's a good segue. Let's, um, let us move over to the duel that is master. We can still, if you have any questions uh, that you want to discuss or whatever, feel free to still leave them. We can still talk about stuff. But first, I want to, we can talk about this while we play the game, right? Let's, um, let's just start by looking at this real quick. So we have dual trial, extreme duel, Nibiru the primal being. Uh, so this is one of the ones where you just need to win three times to get a pack, but depending on how fun it is, we can even try some different stuff. And the rules for this are relatively simple. The monster card Nibiru the Primal Being is added to both players' hands at the start of the duel. Be mindful of your opponent's Nibiru as you navigate the duel. You do not need to include Nibiru in the deck that you use. Um, so I believe what this means... Um... What this means is you get a Nibiru and you draw four other cards. You don't you don't actually get the full five next to the Nibiru, right? You have uh you have four cards in your hand plus Nibiru. No, you draw five? Oh, you just get an extra card. Oh, okay. I, I didn't I didn't think it was gonna work like that, but alright. Okay, so the reason why I find this interesting is I have often I have often thought about things like this where um i think the last time i thought about this was when we had the maxi discussion for the 69th time or whatever it was um because one of my arguments was that i think cards like nibiru cards like maxi are especially interesting when your opponent has to respect them in their deck choice right um and now Max C is a is a very extreme example because the card is still extremely broken and should not be legal. I I just want to make that clear. But I think Max C would be healthier for the game if uh if there weren't like infinite ways to negate it, right? Like picture this. Picture this, right? The uh the reason why they made Max C is because they recognized at some point 
that the first turn was getting out of hand, special summoning was getting out of hand, so they wanted to make a counter, which in theory is a fair point. That's a fair idea, right? Now, the problem in practice is that um, the, the modern Yu-Gi-Oh decks, especially in Master Duel, um, that stuff exists, right? They are not banning it, right? They are not banning it, but people also still play it, even though, why are people playing it when it loses to Max C, right? There's so many decks in the game where the entire game plan is to full combo the opponent, and if the opponent Max sees you, you literally just pass and probably lose, right? So if the idea is to discourage people from playing that sort of stuff with Max C, right? Why doesn't it work? Why are people still playing that sort of stuff, right? The answer is that Max C only is a factor in a couple games, right? Because it's only, it's it's a card game. You have to draw the card. Um, and the other thing is, even if your opponent has Max C, you have way more ways to stop Max C than Max C's, right? Like there's like three Ash, two called by one cross out at the moment. Maybe there's Gamma. So decks sometimes have up to eight ways to stop the Max C and still and still do what they do anyways, right? So, um, I think it's a super hypothetical scenario, but I think in a world where you are always under max C, uh, the game would obviously be a whole lot slower. It would probably end up being relatively boring because you would, uh, you would only play like no flu or something. But, um, the, the idea of forcing everyone to respect Nibiru because it's always there is an interesting concept. So I want to try how that works out. Because if I'm going into this thing, I am never bringing a combo deck, right? Like, we just have to, we just have to play slow Yu-Gi-Oh! today, right? Because, uh, because Nibiru is always there. Right? So like, what do we start with? I mean, obviously we could start with Paleo, but I want to I want to leave the Paleo for later. <laughs> now, what, the one thing that I don't want to do, the one thing I really don't want to do, guys, is just play a stun deck. I really don't want to play a stun deck. Everyone plays DD Designator. Oh, that's so cringe. Are you serious? I thought about this this morning. Are people really doing that? Are people are people just playing combo decks and and using um, DD Designator or Prohibition or something, calling the Biru? There's no way. <laughs> There's no shot. They do that. Declare a card name, look at your opponent's hand. If they have the declared card in their hand, remove from play that card. If they do not have the declared card in their hand, remove from play one random card in your hand. They do that? Okay, you... Okay, chat, hear me out. What if... What if... What if we are... Giga Five Heads... And we play... A deck that doesn't play... That doesn't play into Nibiru. Um, and we play a way to punish the people that do the de DD Designator because we play Labyrinth and we use a furniture. And if they activate DD Designator, we chain the furniture to discard the Nibiru so they have to remove a card from their hand. That's my first instinct. All right. Let's do that. Um, now, I don't think we want to go blind second. I don't think we want to go blind second. We're just going to play a regular Labyrinth to begin with. No, none of, none of this, none of that. We don't need the Nibiru in the main deck. Uh, let's get rid of these. Hazme, Fire Attacker, Shuffler. Um... Where are all these cards going? Okay, anyways. Labyrinth. We play Furnitures. We play the Field Spell. We play... I think this is good with Transaction Rollback. Let's play two of this. I don't think we need... 
three Arias. I like one. Mm. We play Bloss. We play Imperm probably. Uh, we... We can play like a... Uh, punishment. version with these we play rollback we still play a daruma i'm pretty sure maybe even more the rumors i don't know mm, and then we we need fugaruras Two entities. Two Buzephalus. Okay, we need to take out some stuff. Exiton. Lugaris. Dark. Angel. Baguska. Beatrice. Zeus. Like this. Good enough. And then uh, we... Play. What is the last card we add? I'm thinking, are, is anyone doing stuff in this event where they just play like combo decks that can play through Nibiru? Like um, Super Heavy Samurai or something like that, where you need to draw like Effect Veiler plus Nibiru? Right? Because in theory, if you always have Nibiru, Effect Veiler kind of becomes a god card, right? Lots of Branded. Oh, right. Branded is decent against Nibiru. Some people play Gigantic Sprite. Yeah, Effect Baylor seems good. Let's play two Rollbacks. Uh, and one Welcome. It's a little light on Engine. But it's fine. Let's just try. And see what people play. All right, extreme duel. And then surely we'll get a couple games with the paleo deck in. Surely that's going to happen. You know what's funny is that if we don't need the Nibiru in the paleo deck, it gives us a discard for Dynamicious. Phenomenal synergy. Okay, how does this look like visually? Five, and then... Okay. <laughs> Very funny. All right, and you open three hand traps just like that. I think we're having the same idea here. <laughs> okay. What could the last card be? I don't know, man. No idea. I hope it's not Ash. Should have set one first so they can't target this, I guess, but it's fine. Yeah. Uh crackdown out of all things? Okay. So what is this? Just stun? It's 
look like it looks like stun. Oh. Sweet. I have the feeling we're not going to need this Nibiru. Do I, set, I I think I set my maxi. Uh, should I should I sh shotgun this just in case they normal summon like a barrier statue or Apache? I guess I can Valor it. Yeah, I can Valor it. That's okay if they have that. All right, let's let's uh, let's attempt a big welcome labyrinth. Dark bribe. Okay. I'm drawing exceptionally bad. Yeah, put effect veilers into these decks. They are pretty good. Uh... All this just because I didn't set the punishment before I summoned this thing. Ooh, they play Punishment as well. Okay. Rest in peace, Field Spell. What a great showcase of this event in the very first game already. Isn't that just phenomenal? Alright. Here we go, starting up the engines. Do you even play monsters? I don't even feel good. I do not I don't even feel good in the slightest. Not in the slightest.
Uh, thank you for the bits. Yeah, I've heard of that concept. I think it's interesting. I think stuff like that is always very interesting. End of the main phase? Is this during the main phase? Yeah. Why are you passing? I'll accept it. Do I trade Ariana's here? Probably not. Yeah. What is their hand? Well, I, I, I bet you they have Nibiru in their hand. But it's not unlikely for them to have another Maxi or like... Uh, Ash. Another Ariana is also entirely possible. Oh, Ariane. Okay. Uh, that one I shall allow. Ooh, roll back this card. Okay, now it's getting interesting. Oh, no response window. Maybe no, uh, maybe no Ash. That'd be good. I just started Master Duel. Would you say it's worth crafting the staple hand traps first? So, on the one hand, yes. Why is it the end of the... Why didn't you not... You didn't even set this thing. Yeah. Oh, you go battle phase. I thought... Okay, I thought... Uh, end, I thought end of main. Okay, I miss... I, yeah. Rap. Uh, what I meant, what I meant to say, I was distracted. Uh, crafting the staples makes sense, hundred percent. But um, it is a little bit pointless if you craft staples and then you don't have a functioning deck, because staples alone don't give you a, a, a working deck, right? So like, uh, if you if you have a solid deck, even if it's not, it doesn't have to be the best deck or anything, just anything that's fine, right? Then I would suggest crafting staples. It's probably even smarter to just like craft um, a mediocre deck that is budget in and then some staples rather than crafting like a meta deck that has a lot of ultra rares because then uh, you were like meta decks usually don't last forever, but staples do last a, a longer time, if that makes sense. So yeah, I think I think because uh, you're gonna need the staples at some point, anyways. Buy one of the structures like salad. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Yeah. Or you yeah get the code. Use the code and uh, use the get the sword soul deck.
I'm gonna be honest with you guys, so far, in terms of the decks that people are playing, it's just like... They just play the slow decks. Uh, well, I mean, I've sample sizes too, so... Asher for gaming. They would 18 months. Appreciate that. I believe you have now achieved the highest, uh, the highest sub badge that we have because I never thought we would get this far. But ah, uh, Van or TV. Thank you for the first time sub. Appreciate that as well. Thank you. Ah. What is this? Cash Tira or Tier Limits? Probably Tier Limits. Yeah. Tier Limits is not a bad choice. Because it's not that hard to play around uh, Nibiru if you know it's there. If you know it's there, it's pretty easy to play around. Definitely tier, they always freaking open Fenrir. So you think because it's because they open Fenrir, you think tier limits has a higher chance of opening Fenrir than other decks. You're probably right, actually, because if it was Cash Tira, they would they always open freaking Unicorn, right? So you're right. Yeah, you're actually 100% correct on that. Has to be that, right? Cannot be any other way. All right, engine acquired. That's nice. Let's try this again. I am low key annoyed by this Fenrir. I kind of want to destroy it with Entis. I will do that. The question now is, do I normal summon this to search punishment? Or do I normal summon this, this card big? Nah. But the problem is if I normal this, I kind of want to get rid of this Rhino Heart. And then I, I'd have to double it. And then I don't have... Hmm. What if I go... Ariane pitch big welcome special Ar Ariana. Ariana searches... Furniture. <laughs> no, I don't want the Washua thing to be the two-year emote. Thank you. Is Paleo good in this event? Oh, we will find out. Don't worry about it. Don't you worry. We will find out soon enough. Don't have this me. Okay, good. Dude, you summoned it in defense? Are you serious? They strudel. What are the odds that they are playing a card called Black Rose Dragon? What are the odds?
I'm too scared of this. Can't take it. I'm not ready for that. Can I check my opponent's deck after the game? Oh, hello. You can? Okay. We will find out whether they had it or not. So they have used the Strudo and they've normal summoned Snow. If I pop this Rhino Heart now, if they use it to bring it back, that's summon number three. They send a tier name, fuse with it, make Kikolos, that's summon number four. And then they have to stop. And I draw two cards from my max C. I think that's okay. It's better than just putting Snow into the graveyard, I think. Yeah, they don't use it. <clears throat> They've been got. Yeah, okay. Burgic, thank you for the 19 months. Welcome back. And Fantasy Atlantis, thank you for the prime. All right. Uh, we have obtained a pack, which means now we pull. First of all, we pulled an ultra rare. Hello, ultra rare. I can, I can, I can already, I can already taste it. There we go. Unchained Soul of Yama, number three. I needed that. Sick. Easy as that. All right. And once after we're done with this, after we're done with this, um, <laughs> we can now play some uh, kind of whatever stuff. You know, we were we we are done with the tryharding portion. Uh, so is this where we gamba? I think it's where we gamble. Check for Black Rose. Ah! They didn't play it. <laughs> they didn't play it. We wasted our punishment. I can't. I can't do that. I can't tell them when to release the balance. They don't listen to me. I have nothing to do with it. Dude, my Sheeran was dead before I had Nibiru in hand. Isn't that crazy? Can we see the cat? Well, the I, we don't have it yet, but there's pictures on my Twitter. Uh, but I got news today that we can, in fact, uh, adopt him. We have confirmation now, so we're going to get him next week. Well, not Nimlerias again. Did you pick out a name? Well, it, he already has a name. He's eight years old. His name is Sinatra. So I, I think we're just going to keep it that way. It feels weird to rename someone who's already eight years old, you know? Rename him Circular Smile. Yeah, I think I'll pass on that.
Can Opa Vinia become his second name though? <laughs> the second name, huh? Sinatra Opa Vinia. All right. Sounds good. All right, so what does this do? This is like targeting, negating targeting uh, stuff. Okay. Oof. Oof. How do I have two triggers? I didn't mill a single tier limit. I guess there's only three and 60. Well, actually, I'm under max C. I, don't, I didn't want a tier limit anyways. Joke's on you. I didn't want a tier limit. Oh, I got rollback and trippy karma, though. Hello. Hello. Did I mill Pearl or Rhino? Obviously not. Obviously, I did not mill Pearl Rhino. That be that be that be silly. Why would I mill Pearl Rhino? I think I'm gonna rearrange. I'm gonna rearrange with Pearl Rhino. What a weird behavior they are displaying right now. What kind of weird behavior is that? Hmm. When your opponent activates a card effect that targets a Nemleria card. So they have some negation stuff, unless I use, like, what, the Ruma? I don't really want to go in this turn, though. Do I normal summon my Sheeran? Probably. Normal summon Sheeran. Actually, I probably should have... I think I'm going to roll back all annoyance just to pop one of the back rows. Should have done that before normal summoning, obviously. Just because I'm going to Dynamicious discard another rollback, so I, I'm going to have another one next turn anyways. I can't make use of both on the same turn. If this interacts with my Sharon, this was obviously I get punished for summoning it first, but I guess I could have. So what happens? What does this thing do again when your extra deck is completely empty? They they kind of I remember they go crazy when you have no more other cards in the extra deck. Uh 
uh, must be special summoned by having no cards in your extra deck. You can only summon it once per turn. If this card is special summoned, for every three of your face down banished cards, you can banish up to one card from your opponent's field and their graveyard face down. Then shuffle one of your face down banished cards into the deck for each card you banished. Okay. But that, that thing's that triggers on summon. Don't think you can respond. Why can't I respond? The spell. No, it doesn't say you can't respond. If they play the normal spell, okay. We're doing some toggle gaming real quick. Mill. Another rollback, tier cash, and more paleos. Okay, tier cash effect. We keep gambling. Vivid tail and transaction rollback. Um, Maybe I should have kept Saliak for negating this. Possibility. Okay, that's going to be it for now. At the moment, they can't summon this. Because they have one other face down card.
Isn't this deck completely cracked if it opens Extravagance? Or like, isn't it an incredible advantage for this deck to open Extravagance, rather? That feels unreasonable that they opened the one of Extravagance. Um... Well, we definitely chain a Paleo. But I also think we want to prevent that one. Oh, I thought that was a continuous trap. Oh god. I thought I I, I mistook it with the other one. Dude, MSC negates, make your jokes now. I thought it was I thought it was a continuous trap. I didn't look hard enough. <laughs> oh man, that is so annoying. Oh god. Oh god. That's so cringe. Okay. Okay, they add another that uh, sure. Uh, yeah. Don't say world champ, by the way. <laughs> it's not washed. Hold up. Mm. They just call light with this, though. I feel like I have too many actions to do <laughs> at this turn. Can I just mill a rice to full height? The answer is apparently no. Dude, why can't I activate Meta Noise? I'm confused. If you can. Oh, they're all light. Never mind. I thought these were others. 
Dude, why did they leave Mud Dragon out of all things? This just fucks me over. Can't banish any of the Paleos though, and they can only attack two of them. Wait, you left me snow and rollback? I'm winning this game. One, two, three. Three summons. I feel like this dex gimmick is not even fun. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe it's just me. It might just be me. There's no way I have... I I can't do it. No, I can't do it. Yeah, fuck. I think I win if I just snow that, but I don't have the time for it. It's okay. How do you win here? If I have more time, I win that easily. I don't think that matchup's even that hard. Or like that matchup, I don't that doesn't seem hard, but uh it's just like if uh if I have all if I have to read all the cards ten times, it's just like annoying. And the fact that I used all the noids on the freaking uh normal trap didn't help. Like if I had kept the rollback for like uh karma cannon or something like that, like there was no problem there. This is a 60 card deck. Yeah, that's a it's a grass deck. They should give more time to the world champ. No, they shouldn't. That's okay. It's it's fine to lose two decks uh, because you don't know the cards. It's just like you're at a disadvantage if you don't know the cards. That's just something to live with, right? I, I find it annoying still, and it, it is frustrating whenever it happens, but it is part of playing this game. Like, uh, you have to accept it, basically. Why did they let that happen? I'm so confused, anyways. What do you think about this deck's, uh, This event's gimmick seems sort of pointless since the whole reason Nib works as a hand trap is if you, if you don't know about it. Um, well, no, because it still incentivizes people to play a lot slower decks. Like, I mean, we've played against no, um, literally no, uh, like, stupid combo decks so far, which is actually quite, um, refreshing, on, like, unironically. It's, it's, I'm fine with it. Just don't summon it in front of my trap trick. Anywhere else is whatever. Goodbye, trap trick.
You have two fires now? Probably not. You want me to... Oh, yeah, you want minus 500. Okay, sure. I thought they wanted me to have the Sharon back in hand by bouncing it, but obviously not. That's fine. Is Vaboku good in this deck? I played it in the pure paleo. In the tier limit version, I haven't had the space for it. Why do you never play Waking the Dragon? Because that's not a good Yu-Gi-Oh card. You probably don't win even if they pop it. I do need to remind myself that there isn't a Biru in their hand, which wouldn't tribute any of their stuff, which is a little scary. Dan Coro, thank you for the eight months. Appreciate that. Okay, now don't show me all three. There's no way. Earth. Dark. Okay.
I love Animal Carrot's hidden effect is probably better than the first effect, honestly. That's it's so crazy. You establish this guy, you you get additional traps every turn. It's the most fun part about it. Surely, I mean, Nibiru doesn't really matter here, is the thing. Half of my board has a graveyard effect, and the other half is unaffected by monsters. We're gonna ignore the fact. We're gonna ignore the fact that I just tried to pop the Borger to bait out the back row. But it couldn't be destroyed by card effects anyways. And they forgot about it too, so it baited out the back row anyways, so it actually was fine. We're sim we're just not gonna talk about that. This is a negative Nibiru, literally. These are the type of games where I think it's fun when Nibiru is involved, right? Like this this was a this was a fun thing. I enjoyed this. If these are the kind of games that this event promotes, then I'm fine with it. Um... I'm about to put Trivi Karma back into my graveyard with Lee and Colia. Those are things that I never thought I would say ever. But it did just happen. And I am happy it happened. Dude, we can do this forever. Open end. This is an open ender right now. Let's just go and let's go Dynamicious. Target this Nibiru. Gain a Paleo. Discard Metanoise for effect. 
to add back Tierleman's Cash Tira from the graveyard and trigger Scream because we summoned all Annoids while we controlled Kaleidoheart. Don't mind if I do. Uh, now let's go battle phase. I don't remember where what was. I want to crash with the Opabinia into something that isn't super large. One of them, this was Mad Love. I think that's 2000 defense. So I want to get that one with Kaleido Heart. Uh, and this one should be Pantera, which is like 1100 or 1500. I don't know exactly. 19. Okay, well, that's just barely less. That's fine. But I do want a Zeus, so. What an incredible deck. What an incredible deck. It'd be very funny if we attached Raisin now. Okay, we didn't. I like how they're still going. I like how they're like, nah, this is not over. Here's how Bernie can still win. I built Snow and Backjack casually. Are you trying to crash and then evenly matched me? No. You can only attack my Zeus. <laughs> I like how they still attacked. I like the commitment. I respect it. I respect it. <laughs> oh god. All right. Let's just, let's just end it. Brap. 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 Ah, Opabinia to attack as well. Why not? Why not? Smooch. Give the rock a smooch with Opabinia. There you go. And then Nip Token. Ugh. BM, BM, toxic streamer, toxic streamer. <laughs> um, yeah, this deck's great. This deck is great. That was the decklist, by the way. But for all intents and purposes, you can always check the decklist in my Discord. Just go exclamation mark Discord. Uh, and there's a channel called Current Decklist, and it is also up there, whenever. And the Discord is a great place in general to, like, discuss Yu-Gi-Oh! and other stuff, so make sure you join it if you're not joined yet. If you could make up an event like this, but with a card other than Nibiru to be added to each opening hand, which one would you pick? Ooh, that's a good question. I don't know. What would be the next best or next most interesting one? Maxi in every hand? I mean, I I think as you guys make, make that, you guys are probably saying that ironically, I think that would be funny. 
Wait, is that runic bestial? Nah, you're based. You're too based. How? How are you this based? How can one individual be this based? That's crazy. No, I don't have a tier card in hand. Otherwise, this Rhino Heart will be nice. Okay. Maybe I should have just let him pop it to make Kikolos. Well, I was kind of in the zone of Vivid Tail dodging it. I just thought it was cool that it was possible. <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't have. Maybe I should have just let it happen. But it was kind of like a button glow so I click it moment. Yeah, no, the bestial wouldn't counter it because if they flashing fire, I wouldn't have a monster. But... Now the thing is, do they really like now they have to like not they have to play around my Nibiru now, right? They can't like do the Lubelion stuff that they really want to do. It's actually not great here because they don't go for they don't have a Baron line. Never mind, they just go for it. Are you aware of what event you're playing, my guy? So well, that's four. I guess you can just make Baron now, but then you also don't get Lubelion. I guess you just go Baron pass. Interesting stuff. I guess this triggers, but I'm not too mad about that. I just don't want them to have regained. Okay. I mean, they're just throwing Beast Steals away against the Tier Limit deck, and they know it's a Tier Limit deck. You should have just vibed with multiple Beast Steals for, for days and Fountain up. Not a Royal Baron. Okay. Still a good start for them. Very much. But yeah. I should have just let the halfness get flashing fired. I think then maybe it's a different game. But I don't know. Interesting. I mean, Rhino Heart surely just gets like a bestial out of them, which doesn't do me much or doesn't do me any good. Tear Cash. Sharon, Pitch, the Havenous. No, it's probably just Rhino, right?
Is there a point in sending Sharon here because they just use a bestial? I kind of have to exhaust the bestials. At the same time, I could just mill two, and that can hit stuff that's also valuable, like Karma Cannon. Uh, not Karma Cannon. Rollback, Tribi Karma, Scream. I feel like it's better value if I just do this. Well, that, that was okay. Just added the tier cash to hand, I guess. Which try to use it now? What do I wait for their turn? Well, I get the see this way. I get the I get the share in anyways, but I got a free paleo and a free tear cash, and this tear cash can actually run over the ball drake. So this is uh, incredible. We just got free stuff because we gambled, kids. Isn't that great? The second Sharon hurts. The second Sharon was the only, I guess, Trippy Karma, but like we, we have, like now we actually arguably have targets for. We have targets for Lee and Colia now that are worth putting back, so it's not too bad. This entire thing. I'm not gonna lie, besides the uh besides the initial um stun matchup, most of the stuff that we've been playing against has been pretty based and pretty fun to go up against. So I actually I actually am enjoying this event. Ooh, trap trick. Cartesia F. Yes. Yes. I'm just confused they haven't popped with the Baron yet.
Wait, you didn't use the Baron on that? Okay. I wasn't expecting that. I, I was doing it to bait the Baron, because I feel like they have to do that, but... Sure. I guess they can they can flip it back up. But I I think this is fine. I mean it depends what they summon here, I guess. If they summon the Hugin to protect from all the noids, they do. Ooh. Not using Okay, they are they are behaving very weirdly. They can flip Baron, they can. Mm -hmm. They must have another runic, but that's fine. The thing is, they surely don't play three Hugans, right? Did they go through Gary? Uh, no, but the last card in hand is um, Nibiru. So if they go for Gary to add back the fountain, they don't have another runic to trigger it. So that's actually not a big deal. We are getting rather unlucky on these mills, but I guess I'm not sure what we are expecting to mill. But like, it's like they just can't clear any of my stuff. Like everything survives. That's why I think not uh, negating the karma cannon. They thought they were smart with it, but that actually was not smart. Like they they just can't do anything now. They obviously have a runic in hand. Otherwise, they would have. Um, otherwise, they would have used fountain on the first on the first runic. So their hand is a runic and a Nibiru. And now they pass. Yeah. Phenomenal. Yeah, they had to negate the Karma Cannon, so... Well. They didn't even set the, uh, the runic. Oh, I have no more Dynamishes? Oh, Smiting Storm banished the last one. Okay, that's not a big deal, though. I can just... Only uh, Colia like, roll back the same. Or Trivi Karma? Or Vivid Tail? Vivid Tail Bounce Rhino Heart seems pretty cool.
You can't send anything with a rhino? Oh, right, because both my Sharons are gone. Mm -hmm. Fine, though. See what we draw. Okay, Scream makes it so the Baron has to negate because now the tier cash runs over. Problem solved. Just so that the Opa beat it. Dude, I'm gonna Zeus myself when my opponent has no cards. And it's still gonna feel good. I'm about to Zeus myself when my opponent has no board. And I will enjoy it. Look at this. Look at this zoos. <clears throat> nib? I mean, let him nib. I don't care. They, they can nib. I mean, nib my Rhino Heart Halfness tier cash. By all means. By all means, Nibiru this. Yes, sure. Uh, I don't think I chain. No, I don't. I chain Wibbit Tail. On the tier cash. Literally helping me out there. I was gonna lose my Pearl of Rhino, but now I don't. Just Havness. I'm gonna fuse with Opa Binia just because I think that's funny. This deck truly is, I'm gonna go turn 8 and you can't do anything about it? Yeah, kind of. This deck is very fun. I, I do still, I do still enjoy the Paleo portion way more, way more than the Tillamon portion. But I like how it adds even more like random milling into the mix.
Have you seen the Runic Prank Hits profile? Uh, I haven't. But we will do a stream, I think, next week where you guys can send me your craziest Runic ideas and I'm going to evaluate them. The submissions for that are also going to be in the Discord. There's, I'm probably going to open that on the weekend. Uh, so in, in case you actually want my opinion on that, uh, join the Discord and you can submit it there. Mm, let's see if there's something else that seems like we would want to play it in this event. Let's play a little bit of this. And obviously we take out Nibiru. Mm, I mean, it should just be board breakers though, right? We just play board breakers. We just screw Valor. Maxi seems fine still against what people are playing. Hmm. The games might be very slow, so I'll play a Herc base. So I can recycle my extra deck. Lightning Storm? I mean, definitely Duster. Dust. I think Duster and Evenly should be okay. Pancratops? If we're blinding second, Pancratops seems okay. That three, I only have two. That's alright. Is there any other good, like, spell card that we could use? We could play, like, Cosmic. Cosmic seems alright. Some Paleo? No. Cosmic seems okay. Cosmic seems better than Pancratops. <laughs> Thank you for the 11 months, Leo Boss. Uh, jamming Waves? I'm not sure if I want jamming waves. Can play a third linkage to make sure we don't break. Okay. We don't need Celine anymore. Third Chizuku. I kind of like two Zeeks. We don't need this anymore. In this format, I don't think. Uh, actually, Kita seems better than Dark. Drop to Hercules and add Avarice. The thing is that Hercules base is searchable when I need it, and one Avarice would just show up at the most random times. I think Hercules base is better for that reason. And you can also add back the Hercules base with Kagari, so it technically goes infinite. DD Designator is funny in this event, you just get to look at your opponent's hand for free, yeah. I haven't seen a single one uh, do it of my opponents, but technically true. How are you guys enjoying this event? I find it fun, actually. I, it's more fun than I thought it was going to be. Melfi Caddy. That's a perfect target for my afterburner, I'm not gonna lie. Unfortunately, I can't pop the back row as well. I kind of want to play into it because I have thrust. I think I'll play into it. I'll let him do this. 
Ja, war zwei. Chain link, it should. Oh, right. I, yeah, but I, I wanna, I wanna use this. Uh, I forgot you could do that with linkage. You're right. I think I'm gonna leave this here so that I can afterburner it. Also, Leo Boss, thank you for the 11 months. Appreciate that. Thank you. All right, boys, we're in. We are controlling the game. Why did they set that? I don't know. Maybe they thought it was a useful bluff in case I'm... Because I let them go first. Maybe they were scared. Thank you for letting me know. I... Yeah. Cool. Text to speech was a great invention. I'm still not convinced I should have turned up the volume on it. I feel like we've we've gone one and a half years or two years of streaming without ever uh, where you guys could just not hear, even though it was technically there. But no. So what is this sprite? Did you just break? I, I, I thought it was just Melfi's, but I, apparently it's Melfi Sprite. I guess that that is one way to ignore Nibiru, just make gigantic Sprite. Well, now that's not going to be possible any anymore. 
It's a little bit annoying because I don't really want a Nibiru because then my Widow Anchors are off. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> I'm not... Look, I'm not complaining in the slightest because you guys are, 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 are spending four bucks to do that. I appreciate that. I'm still questioning that decision though. Like, the fact that I appreciate it does not stop me from questioning that decision. It should be 10. <laughs> no. Nah. Dupe frog, my beloved. Okay, cool. You are now based. It's the end of the main phase. Do they have evenly matched? I'm curious if they played, if that was the point of doing that. I am curious. No, they're not, they're not even playing that. Okay, cool. Noted. Are we playing Bootin Runic today? <laughs> Dude, that deck? I probably I probably did the uh, the Runic Generator community dirty on that stream. Because the deck is probably better than I made it look. But I just don't like that deck. It's it, it's it's just a personal thing. I just don't I don't know. I just don't enjoy it or something like that. I just don't get it. I don't know why you would play that. I, I don't know. It's it's a it's a mystery to me. Yeah, a runic deck. There's something wrong about a runic deck that doesn't use Hugin or like doesn't want Hugin. Did they just mill Salik and Tearcash and Ku Clock? The stun I'm not I'm not a stun deck enjoyer. Don't call me a stun deck enjoyer. That's not true. That's a lie. You are lying on the internet. I'll show you a magic trick.
You guys seen that before? Today, I learned... It's still not a crazy evenly match, but at least we get to use it, you know? They also milled a shuffler, so we're not getting our engage back. <laughs> Great. Great things all together. We lose Ray in the graveyard and the engage. It's been, it's been sick. Well, at least Thrust is live. I also missed the, the, the latest text of speech. I'm sure it was incredibly funny, but I, 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 I'm sorry. I can't. I have no way. I don't think I have a way to see them. Hold up. Filters. Uh, no, I can't see them. Why can't I see them? Anyways, I'm sure it was incredibly funny, <laughs> as they all are. Uh, failure, thank you for the Prime and Robo, dude. Thank you for the three months. No, not the Herc Bates! All right. Well, 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 well. I see, see, I told you it was incredibly funny. Um, two spells engrave. So let's let's use this. Let's. I was happy about the fire monster until I realized it was lava golem in their graveyard. Let's make this. Get nibbed? I mean, it's. If I get nibbed, it's okay. I need to draw with engage. If they nib here, they get to use halfness as well, which is annoying. They should have nibbed there, but. They're probably waiting for the Shizuku to nib, but maybe they don't want to nib their own lovely. It's also some I I think just nibiruing there and getting the halfness effect was a thousand times better, but That's crazy. That they didn't go for it there. That's like the last time in this game that they're probably able to Nibiru even. That's wild. Let's banish... Arias. Probably. We'll also get rid of tier cash forever. There are two to coup clocks, so that's not worth it. Let's banish tier cash. And then activate multi roll. To set back that shark cannon. 
So I don't have Ray, unfortunately, so they can just attack over my Shizuku, which is a little bit troublesome. But no, it's okay. Oh, they have Chandelier to get back the Ku Clock as well. They're the best. Okay. Dude, the Nibiru was even better then. They could have just gone, uh, they could have just gone with the Nibiru chain furniture. It was so good. If I shotgun Maxi, they just chain Big Welcome. If they activate Big Welcome, I can't chain the Maxi either, but it's okay. If they, in case they start with Shirin, I, I still get value out of it. No matter what. No matter what. I still lose, probably. I don't know, maybe if I live this turn and the thrust does some work next turn. There's a world where that's fine. But it is hard. Especially when they mill... Snow... Stoby Torby. Yeah, that's a that's a problem. The, the thing is, if I summon, if I summon this snow, they have to be, I, 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 if they're not smart, there's a chance that this is very good for me. It depends though. It depends. Actually, no, they can just, I was, I was, I was about to say like, yeah, they just pop it. Yeah, that's fine. But that forces them to pop that one instead of my multi-roll, which I think is important. Because the multi-roll gives me important stuff. Yeah. Man, that shuffler ruined me last turn. Speaking of the devil, another one. Sick. Love that for me. Love that for me. How do I like Runic Bistiel at the moment? I think it's okay. Like, Runic Bistiel is playable both in TCG and Master Duel. It's not the best deck in either, but it's alright. Bistiels are pretty good in both formats at the moment. Is That's the nice thing about it. Ishizu was a mistake? Absolutely true, yes. Factual. Dude, shufflers, no matter what deck I play, it literally doesn't matter which deck I'm playing in, in modern Yu-Gi-Oh. Every single time my opponent has like a solid opener and gets a shuffler somehow, I lose the game to the shuffler. Like every time. I just don't beat these guys ever. They just always fuck me up.
they played it well but it, that was still very frustrating but it's not like it's not because their deck is frustrating it's just the way that played out was kind of annoying What effect would I like to see on a new Paleo Trap? Oh, I've spent time thinking about that. I don't know, though. Like, I'm not sure. I feel like it, it's very hard for them to make actual good Paleo support. They have to, they have to really want it. So I think, I think Paleo support would have to solve two primary, primary problems for Paleos. Um, we're getting into some theory, boys. Lean back. So... It needs to. It would need to do two things. The main problem that the deck has uh, is that your opponent just... If your opponent is good and knows what they're doing in the Paleo matchup, the fact that they can just chain block all of your Paleos... Because modern Yu-Gi-Oh decks are incredibly good at that. Every single like Yu-Gi-Oh card has some random quick effect that you can chain at any point. Like freaking... I don't know. I, I played against Branded and the amount of times... If my opponent was good, they could have chain blocked everything ever, like with like Cartesia, Quick Effect Fusion once per turn, Mud Dragon once per turn, Dragostapelia once per turn, Branded in Red, Mirror Jade, uh, everything, right? Like if it, everything chain blocks nowadays, right? I think what Paleo needs is something along the lines of Lovely Labyrinth, right? Where it stops your opponent from chaining to your normal trap cards. Um, but not in the sense like, yeah, like, I don't know, maybe, maybe like a, a Paleozoic Link monster or Xyz monster, like a, 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 an alternative to Opabinia, right? Even though Opabinia is incredibly good, but like, uh, yeah, or like a main deck monster, maybe like a level two Paleo main deck monster that's uh, like, that's unaffected by monsters and says your opponent can't respond to your trap cards. The problem is that a card that only does that would not be good enough. That's the problem. Like a card that is that that only does that, nothing else for the deck is just not good enough because you're spending one card, you go minus one essentially just to make your cards not all suck. But that's still not good enough, right? So like it would have to have like they would have to put that as like a bonus effect on another card that is already decent like on a decent paleo card right like the card needs to be solid like i don't know maybe like a i don't know maybe like a spell card that says um add a paleozoic from your deck to your hand and then for the and then you can like banish it from your graveyard and then for that turn that turn where you banish it your opponent can't respond to your trap cards normal trap cards you know, I think that'd be interesting. Something like that. That would help, right? And the other thing that they need is they would they need good. Just I I think just one more would already be enough. But like a good Paleozoic trap that helps you get Paleozoics into the graveyard early on, right? Because the worst thing is when you have to flip trap cards that you don't have Paleos in the graveyard for. Right, like maybe a uh, uh, yeah, like a, a a card that's that's good to activate early that gets you at least one paleo into the graveyard and does something solid, right? Um, well, yeah, paleo circular, yeah, something like that, <laughs> something like that. <laughs> oh God, yeah, well, yeah, I I think I think those are the two things that they would need. Um, and that would be quite cool if they got that. Oh, yeah. I don't know. All right, I'll be on the toilet real quick, and I'll be right back in, in a bit. And then we have to also, we have to get ready for the podcast soon. It's still like 45 minutes-ish, so we will play some more. But uh, the podcast is also soon. Paleo field spell when? I don't know if they really need a field spell. I mean, like, uh, I, the other thing is, I don't really feel like they want to make Paleo support. Like, if you compare it, Almost, almost any archetype in the universe has gotten more support than Paleo recently. They just hate me on a personal level. Anyways, I'll be right back.
All right. Okay, what is this suggestion? Uh, can be done in a single Paleo Trap. Discard, discard, add one Paleo Trap to the hand or send it to the graveyard. During the main phase, you can banish this card for the rest of this turn. Your opponent can't respond to Paleo. Yeah, something along those lines. Something along those lines. But it needs to, I, I think it needs to include all, all normal trap cards. Because like, the, the, the thing about Paleo is like, it's, it would actually be playable if you could like collect resources over a couple turns and then actually pop off on a turn right the problem is that if you uh if you go if you go ahead and you try to pop off with paleo and then your opponent has chain blocks and like an ash on top of it like let's say you start with like reckless greed they ash it sick on your pop that costs you three cards because you don't draw two and you don't bring back a paleo right then you activate another trap they chain block that one you're you're completely out of gas like you you have waited for like for a couple turns to set it up and then you just are out of gas right like so like i think that sort of thing like i think a card that says i actually like that idea quite a lot of activate banish it from the graveyard and um for that turn your opponent just can't respond to your normal trap cards and then the first effect does something paleo related like at like add a paleo or or whatever right that one that that would be quite interesting because then you could just like select one turn you're like and also it's a normal spell so you can only banish it during your turn so you can't use it to like make your on your opponent's turn make your karma cannon unable to respond respond to or something like that right um that sort of stuff uh, but then you could actually look forward to like you would stall out the game for and then you would look for an opportunity for one turn and you know you're going to pop off and then you're going to use the spell card to uh, to activate your your draws your draw traps and stuff like that without them getting ashed or chain blocked right that'd be really cool like uh i mean I, and i think that wouldn't even be that unrealistic because other decks have had that in the past right like labyrinth has it with lo lovely labyrinth um sky striker has it with multi-role uh even branded lost to an extent does that right to stop the opponent from negating your bandit fusion with like stuff like solemn judgment or whatever right like i think i think whenever there's a deck that has those specific problems right like your very key cards being interrupted they do give them tools to deal with it they just haven't done so with paleos yeah did you get anything good from the free pack? Yeah, I pulled my third Unchained Soul of Yama. That was pretty cool. Uh, that being said, we've talked way too much about Paleo. Now I need my I need my I need my I need my daily dose. I need my daily dose. Is there any changes I want to make to this? The IDP I'm not I'm not super happy with. Uh, but I'll leave it for now. Put magical hats in. Magical hats would be very funny. But it's a battle trap, so no. Did we talk about yesterday's raid? We did talk about that. Yeah, it was very funny. That was in the beginning of the stream. I guess Morganite. <laughs> Now that I think about it, Morganite means that they don't have to respect my Nibiru anymore. Maybe Morganite in this event shouldn't be there. <laughs> it's just like, well, okay, now I can just play into the Nibiru. But I'm just assuming, honestly, the way I'm using this, uh, the way I'm seeing this event is just like everyone plays decks where Nibiru is dead anyways. So you might as well ignore, you kind of ignore the Nibiru, right? The, the Nibiru isn't really there. Like literally we've played like eight games or nine games. We have been able to activate the Nibiru one time. Dude, their hand is completely custom cracked, broken. And they're probably going to snipe my Morganite or the Karma Cannon. They're not going to snipe the dead Nibiru or the one of the Paleos, which would actually be good for me, you know? Is this the solution to Yu-Gi-Oh? It is kind of fun. 
this 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 event is fun. how is their hand so custom cracked cocaine dude what how both furnitures ku clock ariana oh my god what if they snipe the morganite i'm scooping they pale you at least This is not beatable, though. Like, straight up not beatable. Again, I come back from lunch and it's Paleo versus Lab. I don't know what to tell you, man. It is what it is. You gotta do what you gotta do. If I chain my Paleo now, they just pop it with this. And I can't really stop them from getting this anyways. If they play Eradicator, I'll just leave. I can't... I, I don't think I can beat this hand anyways, but like if they play Eradicator, at least it's fast. Okay, no Eradicator. That's still annoying, but... This is technically good for me because this this I, this is not good from them because now they have a chance to snipe my dead Nibiru. They should have just waited until I set and then they can snipe my back row, which is better for them. Knowing my luck, they're not going to get punished for it and snipe like my trap trick anyways, which is the best card in my hand. So Paleo is cursed, man. I just lose all the coin flips with it. It's so annoying. Okay, 60 cards stare down. What is this? What are, what, are, what are you saying? What do you mean by this? There's no way it's a mirror match. Dude, give me a paleo. They have five set cards. I need a paleo. Okay. I don't really want that grass looks greener.
All right, I'm ready. Lean back, everybody. Get your blankies. Yep. <laughs> no, not the mirror match, dude. Oh, God. All right. The most annoying thing in the paleo mirror is that you need paleo is in the graveyard before your opponent does. Otherwise, they will just put all the freaking... They chain block. Basically... Whoever has more paleos in the grave has infinite chain blocks. That's why I'm loading up more traps in the graveyard with the rollback before they get paleos in the grave. Dude! Oh god... They got more paleos than me! This is not good. Okay, they milled no paleo. That's good. That's good, that's good. They milled backjack though. Dude, did you just snipe into a mirror match? Come on, it's the exact same as well. Oh, come on, man. Why would you do this to me? I mean, it's kind of based, though, unironically. I changed my mind. <laughs> Why would you do this? No, not the Olenoids. I swear to God, if you're watching... So, the thing is... This... If it hits my Leoncolia, it's really good for me. If it hits my Ice Dragon's Prison, it's also really good for me. Because that card is dead. Naturally. Uh, I'm gonna... Chain block that. All right, now we're going to go for a little gambit. They're going to activate another trap card. Hold up. So they have five. I have... Seven. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to chain Needlebug's Nest. Because normally, I don't want to activate my trap cards when they can chain a Paleo to it. If they chain a Paleo now, though, they draw one less with balance. So they are inclined to let this one go through. Also, one Paleo isn't really that big of a deal. It starts getting out of hand when you have multiples. See, they don't chain. So they can draw two here. But now I have more Paleos again. Because I, I only milled one, which is not great. But I have one. So now they need even more traps to be able to pop off. And I milled rollback. Mm, Karma Cannon is pretty good. You're telling them what to do? I mean, dude, it's not that serious. It's fine. I'd rather have 2,000 people know what's going on rather than just one player not knowing what's going on. Hmm... Give me that royal backjack, by the way. Holy. I need that. You are kind of foolish. You are kind of foolish for thinking you can, uh, you can defeat me in a Paleozoic mirror match. You are kind of a fool for that.
They have rise to full height. Okay. One. They only have two paleos. It's kind of pathetic. Mm. Chain it. Do something. Do something about this Anomalocaris. I dare you. Sure. That's actually not bad. That's the the most unfortunate one for me to hit. Mm, I still chain block that one. All right. Uh, do I still play the link one for? I do. Snow. That's another potential chain block. The paleo mirror is so based around who gets the paleos in the grave first. Sure thing. Go for it. I don't care about the snow. I just care about chain blocking. I was about to say, I hope they don't have a good discard, but obviously it was the Nibiru. Feels a bit like Lab Mirror? No, it's, it's definitely way harder. Like... The, the Paleo Mirror is like one small fuck up, I think, can mess up the entire thing. Labyrinth, if you're ahead, I feel like it's kind of just a wash. Oh, Trap Trick. That's a good one. Was that random or did they know? I think they knew. Uh, Mr. Back Choi, thank you for the Prime. Appreciate you so much. Thank you. Also, Mr. Branded Beast, we have about 23 minutes left until we have to start the podcast. So <laughs> I'm just letting you know, do with that information what you will. Dude, no, don't just quit. Don't just quit. Coward. No. Ah, come on, man. Try to bring back a paleo. Dude, you haven't brought back a single paleozoic in this mirror match. Not a single one. Have you? You have not brought a single paleozoic. Trying to challenge me in a paleozoic mirror match. Nice attempt. Is the Paleo deck expensive in Master Duel? It depends. Like, uh, I play Morganite, which is an ultra rare. Uh, one Grass is an ultra rare. This card is an ultra rare, but you don't need to play it. I like it, though. Mm. Do this. 
Let's get rid of Lee and Coley, I think. Because I don't have a value target for that. I hate when this gets ashed. I really hope it doesn't get ashed. Ash ruins Rogue decks. Ash just ruins Rogue decks every time, man. I think Ash is a fine card. I don't have an issue with Ash, but it is true. I do understand the pain of Rogue players when it comes to Ash Blossom. Why is it always the best one, dude? Why is it always the best one? Without exception. Because you said it first? You guys always make up a reason for it. If I put it in the middle, you guys, oh, of course, it's the middle. Uh, if I put it uh, first, you're like, oh, you said it first. If I put it freaking there, you're like, oh, of course, you put it fourth. Everyone puts the best card fourth. That is 52 big from <laughs> 52 big man. They have nothing else. Why is Magnamu 2500? Why can't it be 23? 50 damage. It's so pathetic, man. Can I draw Iperia? I thought it was Iperia for a second. That's still pretty good. What, you're gonna ash me again? Thought so. Why is Sprite Elf just a 1400 beat stick right now? It's so sad. I'm not even sure it's legal to use a banned card in the TCG just like that. I'm just using it as a beat stick because it's bigger than a half to Magnamut. 
Should we talk about that? Or rather not talk about that? Oops. <laughs> I don't want this. That could end up being useful. Only a few more turns. <laughs> We're getting there. Oh no, Ash. Please give me the Iperia. The Iperia. The Iperia. And like roll back. Yeah, we have enough Paleos now. Okay, roll back. Karma Cannon. Okay. Okay, uh, you can... Okay, yeah! Ooh, Fiend Griefing is insane against tier. Left Trap Trick? No, obviously not. Why would I? <laughs> um, we're going in. Dude, this is a combo deck. The trap just isn't real, right? I don't, I don't, I'm not buying it. Trap does nothing. You can't fool me. Magic to gathering as combo deck. That's the funny thing. Uh, the funniest thing anyone has ever said about this deck. Isn't it great though? This was the easiest game I've ever played in my life, guys. <laughs> it was never even close. Ash, Pearl or Rhino, Heartbeat, no problem. No problem. Magnamoot, all these modern cards, not an issue at all. <laughs> Dude, the sprite elf beatdown was crazy. <laughs> oh god. Okay, I I think I don't think we can realistically play another game because we only have ten minutes left. We might just do the we if Farfa I, I saw Farfa in chat already. Maybe uh maybe we can just start the podcast.
Let me see. Let me see. Yeah, spam your Wawas and Jajas. <laughs> Spam your Wawas and Jajas. Make sure the entire screen is full. Uh, bu -bu -bu. Can a mod just enable Fafa though? Yeah, I don't have that one. Also, why are you in my chat and ignoring me on Discord at the same time? How is that possible? How is that even... A thing. Can you, can you explain? <laughs> All right. Okay, Firefly is calling. I just need to donor wall him for a little bit. Just to feel, just so it feels fair again. Hold up. Jaja? What the hell is that noise? Okay, why does your audio sound come? Bro, what is going on with your desk? Holy, dude, you need to check your, devo your voice input settings. What is going on? I'm gonna record this just for like, just so people can like hear the context. Like, this is insane. Oh no, it stopped. Damn it. I think I fixed it already. Oh, damn it. Oh no, I was loading up OBS. I wanted to like show chat this. Oh well. But your volume was way too high. Okay, well, hold up. Say something? No. Okay. <laughs> Can we please get a Fafa emote like mods? Like, where is it? Why do I just have to be a generic uh, fat cat? <laughs> Isn't that Tantan? Uh, no. What? Wait, is it? Wait, I didn't know. I thought it was. Oh. Hang on, Vlad. Is that actually Tantan? <laughs> Wait, is <it's> my cat? <laughs> How did you not recognize your own cat? Well, I was desecrated, dude. Now, wh wh why did I recognize it? I don't know, because it's a GIF in, like, 64 by 64 pixels of, like, this overstretched, like, image. Like, of course I'm not going to recognize it. Chad, are we buying the excuse? <laughs> Wait, hold on. I have a perfect idea. Give me a second. <laughs> yeah, mods, add Fafa, please. Yeah, Click I'll add Fafa. Fafa. Hold, up, hold, up, hold up, hold up. Very important. Use emote. Okay, I have enabled Fafa. Alright, sick. Are you feeling better? Uh, yes. Okay, good. Hang on, I need to like show chat something. <laughs> I'm so stupid. Where is it? Did I miss it? Uh, just give me a sec. I'm, <laughs> I'm making it. Oh, you're okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's not gonna hey be. Hey guys, good. do you recognize your streamer? <laughs> Dude, where is it? It's on Discord. Oh. <laughs> hey guys, do you recognize him? Show them. I mean, yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> this is like super stretched out fucking picture and he's like why you don't recognize your cat <laughs> like, of course you recognize what? it what do you mean you guys don't recognize your world champion <laughs> why the josh oh no <laughs> <laughs> okay all right <clears throat> uh yeah i'm ready to go did you i think you need to set up the camera yes How's the Nibiru event been going? I feel like it's, uh, it sounded really cool on paper, but it's just, everyone's just playing lab mirrors. <laughs> like <laughs> that. Okay. Yeah. I guess Labyrinth is, if you hate Labyrinth, then it's not going to be that fun, but it was more fun than I expected. Cause it was just basically 
what what happened was people just played regular decks minus all the decks that are combo decks and lose to Nibiru. It's, but that's boring. That just sounds like a custom ban list, basically. I was trying to come up with like crazy stuff. Like I think there's like um like I was gonna play like a combo deck and just like activate something funny like sales ban. Oh yeah, um, I, I, people in chat have said that that is what people do, but I haven't seen anyone do that. Yeah, that'd be uh, that'd be that'd be some funny content. If only uh, if only I was streaming. Um, I've been uh been moving house and I was sick earlier this week. Uh, so hopefully we'll be in by like maybe end of the weekend actually. I think realistically the only thing stopping us at this point is like there's no privacy in the bedroom, so like I can't like go to bed. So I gotta get some curtain rails up. At some Wait, point, why is there no? Oh, it's just because it the windows are open and there's nothing. Yeah, just gotta get some curtains installed, basically. And that's uh, basically it. And then I just gotta go through the whole process of like the very, very annoying process of like moving an entire computer setup. Holy! That's, oh yeah! Uh, oh yeah! I, I would be terrified of that. Yeah, especially my setup, which is definitely very professional and uh, <laughs> not com completely cursed. All right, let's see. All right, joining. Da, 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 da. Uh, the fan incident. We don't talk about that. We don't talk about that. All right, loading. Start. There we go. Epic. And we could probably mm -hmm. got like a 240p webcam again as well. Why is chat spamming mods? Did someone come and post like an ASCII penis or something? I didn't, I didn't see it. Buy followers and viewers from this website. Oh, nice. All right. That sounds that's how, just uh, right. That's how Josh's views are so high these days. We need, we need, we need viewers and followers. What is uh, this camera quality? Is this the focus or is this? Hang on. It doesn't look like the focus, no. Yeah, I don't know what it is. Like, it's, uh, it's always just been kind of crappy like this with me for some reason. Uh, it's kind of fine now. Bro, my eyes. What? <laughs> okay. Is, is <laughs> okay, it's not the quality that. Or are you calling me ugly here? <laughs> oh, that's what they meant. Okay, I thought they meant the camera quality. I was like, okay, I, I took that differently than you did. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> I, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't take that one as. Oh my god! It's far from my eyes hurt. Okay. Sure. Well, uh, I'm. 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 I'm happy that you uh, didn't interpret it that way. Yeah. You didn't edit the document at all, did you? No. Why do we have this document? I swear. You I just don't know. Posted I just keep Discord. doing it on Discord. Just send you like bullet points. Chat. We have like a shared Google Doc with like the podcast like topic and outlines and stuff like that. I put like effort and work into this and then josh just like <laughs> Every, posts okay. it in discord <laughs> josh just posts it in discord anyway and then doesn't like so it's hard to like refer to this stuff it's supposed to be mutually well what what do you mean like but dude it's like eight bullet points and there's like a structure to it and there's like thought gone you present to get like as if like this took like 30 seconds it did take like three minutes but it's more effort than he put in okay <laughs> all right Anyways. anyway <laughs> <laughs> Shall we begin? <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, we're good to go. All right. <clears throat> Three, two. Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of Heart of the Cast, wherever you may be watching. Uh, this week, we have uh, the biggest uh, discussion we're going to have, I believe. Oh, this is a good one. I'm excited for this. We've got the extra deck and oh. all of its uh, nuances. Don't 